Good morning! It's Wednesday the 16th of August 2017. Today is very special. It's my sister's birthday. Oh my God, she's so old. Every day I look at her on the face, uh, little FaceTimes with my sister. Not every day, quite often. When I can get hold of her, when she bothers answering the phone... Oh dear. Usually it just rings into oblivion. Ring, 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 ring. No one answers. Do you know how many answer phones I listen to every day? My mate tells me it's people avoiding me. They know that it's me on the phone, so they just don't bother answering. Here's another one. It just rings every time you ring. And it's, it's almost as if people take my calls at their convenience. You know, oh, oh, I'm busy doing something. I'll do it. I'll take it, take it later. But they don't ring back. They don't ring back. Why is that, do you think, lovey? Why is that? Huh? <laughs> Happy birthday, Sharon. Oh, wow. What Now, what are you today? 517? 623? I can't remember now, lovey. You look so much older than your age. I love my sister. You know that. Do you know I haven't got a present yet? Oh. <gasps> I'm thinking, here's what I'm thinking, because <clears throat> usually I'll select something and send it up there. Um, I think I might take her out when I'm up there in September and she can choose something. This time. Oh, not Debenhams. Uh, nothing wrong with Debenhams. In fact, if they want to sponsor this show, it is available for sponsorship. <laughs> nothing wrong with Debenhams, but she goes up there. Oh, they've got a Debenhams where she lives in Lincoln. Ladies wear, I think, on the first floor. And she runs in those up. She goes the escalator and she goes round and looks at every single item that's on that floor. Everything. Dresses, bras, knickers, other undergarments, vests, shoes, stockings, suspenders, stocks. Socks. Stock socks. Stocks. That's what she should be in, so we can throw rotten tomatoes and apples. Yeah, me and the children will do that. Well, enjoy that, won't we, with mummy? Ha, ha, ha. And my sister, bless her heart, has got sayings. You know what I mean? Sayings. Stuff that she's said over the years that, that continues to be wedged in my brain. Her favourite saying, because she don't have much sense of humour, her favourite saying is... I don't find that funny. <laughs> While me and her three children are laughing around her. I don't find that funny. <laughs> Another one of her sayings is she's not very good with phones. She's not very good with mobile phones and, and normal phones as well. And she said she couldn't hear me properly the other, a couple of years ago, to be honest. A couple of years ago, she couldn't hear me properly. So she said... Would it be better if she stood nearer to the router? Don't ask me. And there are other sayings. If any of our children are watching this program this morning, I would like to call in with some of my sister's sayings. There is the phone number this morning. It's up there on the screen for all to see. 0208 I doubt very much they will be, all be working. But there we go. We've opened the phone line early for you today. How generous am I? 020 3477 boys and girls, if you want to call in about anything at all. Uh, there's also a Skype. You can Skype in on United Kingdom Talk. All right, so happy birthday to my delicious, gorgeous sister. And I'll get you something when we're up here, rather than select something. Because I'm, I'm, I keep buying her bags. I buy her nice bags. And I think she might want something different for you. Perhaps a nice pair of shoes, shall? Or something to wear. What would you like? Dying to know. Have a little think about it. You've got about... Do you know, wait a minute. We're in the third week of August, aren't we? God's sake. One, I think it's... Blimey, so, so this... That's, 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 right, right there. I think it's two weeks. It's two weeks' time I'm up there, isn't it? Two or three weeks' time, something like that. I look forward to purchasing you something for your birthday. And also, I think we must have a cake. You know, from that nice cake shop where, where, where you live. We get one of those as well, OK? Uh, good morning to our early people who are with us this morning. Good morning to Adam the Plumber. Morning, Adam. Hope you're well this morning. It's your way in today, isn't it? Yes, I've been to Slimmer's World once again yesterday. It's coming up in a moment. Don't rush me. Don't rush me. Morning to James Clark. Morning, James. Morning, Quiz Reardon. Your new name for the quiz on Upper Street. Quiz Reardon. Yes, it's quiz night tonight, boys and girls. 
What are you doing tonight? That links nicely with the poster that I've just uploaded to the uh, broadcast equipment. There we go. It's tonight, every single Wednesday night, including tonight. Join us for the quiz night at the King's Head Theatre Pub, 115 Upper Street in Islington. All right, come along, 8.30 is start time. Now, it's a good idea to ring ahead and book a, book a table first because it does get quite busy. So if you want to do that, check out the phone number. I don't have it with me at the moment, boys and girls. Uh, just look up the King's Head Theatre Pub. Uh, 115 Upper Street, Islington, quiz night every Wednesday. So that's tonight, starting at 8.30 p.m. OK, 8.30 p.m. tonight. I like that. Quiz Reardon. Does that, does that, I don't know if that works quite properly. Good morning to my nephew, Gary. Morning, Gary. He will know exactly what I'm telling you about when we talk about my sister's sayings. She just has many, many others. Many, many others. <laughs> Good morning to Shania on the Isle of Wight. That boat went past you this morning. It's a big boat. I'll come on to that in a minute. Diane's there. Good morning, Diane. Lovely, Diane. Thank you, uh, those of you that have shared the programme to your Facebook walls and your Twitters and things like that. Very kind of you to do so. Much appreciated. All right. Um, Tony, uh, Mark's there. Good morning, Mark. Karaoke Mark is in the house. Watching the new Royal Navy ship on the television. I've got a photograph of that. One of our own viewers has been down this morning to the dockside to see that. And she sent in a photo. I'll come to that in a minute. Morning to Tony Power, who I saw uh, at the weekend. We had um, Kelly Wilde and Jason Prince come and do us a show at one of the places I work, Central Station on Saturday night. Excellent show, wasn't it? What a fantastic show. She never lets you down, Kelly. You know, over the years, people have run Kelly down, left, right and centre. Oh, no, oh, we're going. There's not a single show in 30 years that I've put her on the stage that she hasn't picked up the audience and sent them into worlds of excitement and, and, and fun. Fantastic. Fantastic. Morning to Ray Reynolds, who joins us this morning. A little late. But never mind, Ray, you're there. That's all that matters. You know, would you be late? For a show at the London Palladium, you know, I have to ask you that, Ray. <clears throat> is it? Oh, it's only Chris, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll pop along when I'm ready. You know, I, I mean, is it a bit like that, really? <laughs> Ray's coming along to the quiz tonight. He and his team will be hoping to win yet again. They, they do get some good wins, Ray. Perhaps you want to challenge Ray's team tonight at the quiz head tonight. At the King's Head tonight. Yes. Morning, Callum. Chance would be a fine thing. I know, Callum. Chance of what? Chance of what? Uh, Chris, do you like Peep Show? I don't know what that is, Peep Show. What is that? Is that a programme on the telly? There was a ghastly programme on the telly I was watching last night. Well, I managed about three minutes. It was even worse than The Only Way is Essex. I'll come on to that in a moment. Uh, and uh, yes, that's all your early messages this morning. Well, I went to Slimmer's World yesterday, as always, boys and girls. That's my first thing to do usually. On a Tuesday, went in, stood in the queue, had a little bit of a laugh with the ladies. Was It's so friendly at Slimmer's, Slimmer's World with Linda. Have I got a picture still up here? One moment, please. No. I've still got a picture on the system. Um, but uh, we're having a little bit of a chat and a joke in the queue. And it's time for weigh-in. And I have lost this week. Da -da 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 -da. One and a half pounds. Thank you very much. Everyone, round of applause. Hooray! Hooray! All with the kind guidance and help of the lovely Slimming World, Slimming World Linda, queen of all weight loss. You can say anything to wit Linda. She's a wonderful personality. She looked fantastic. She's always in pink. She does her hair. And, it's, it's, and I was watching, I was thinking while I was watching her yesterday, doing her, uh, her, um, uh, her chatting and all that. It's a bit like a show, really, isn't it? It's like a show. We all come to see Linda. And she gives us... Uh, she is a Slimming World consultant. Apparently, in this area, they are looking for more Slimming World consultants. And I thought, you know, I, there was a little bit in my head that saying, I think you could do that. <clears throat> Just imagine helping all these people some are uh, massively big, 
Some are uh, just a little bit big. Just imagine being able to help all those people lose weight. And you come the next week and they've lost all this weight. How must that feel for Linda? That's fantastic. And there's a little inkling in my brain thinking, oh, maybe I want to find out a little bit about this. I would imagine it's quite a lot of work involved. Um, but I think I, th I think I could bring a, a bit of humour, a humour to my slimming world with Chris in Bracknell. What do you reckon? <laughs> I think Adam the Plumber's a little bit involved in actually running a slimming world night, aren't you? So I, 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 I did think about that. But one and a half pounds down. So here's the scores on the doors now, OK? And I shall translate this into America, American, and also European. I have now lost one stone and four pounds, which is, in American, 18 pounds, or in foreign European... 8.16 kilos. Thank you. I think that's 10 weeks. I think that's about 10 weeks. So that's good, isn't it? Very pleased about that. I think that's working. I think that's absolutely working. Very, very pleased with that. Thank you very much. James Clark, what are you going to do with your £1.50? What, what £1.50? What is he going on about? No, dear. One point four pound. Uh, one stone, four pounds. Where are you getting £1.50 from? <coughs> I, I don't know what, what James Clark is just on his own world this morning. He really hasn't got a clue what's going on, bless his heart. Speaking from one of those homes for the mentally deranged. That's where he is. At this moment being held down in one of those chairs with the wings on the side and injected with some sort of sedative from the from the nurse from hell, aren't you? <laughs> you'll, be, you'll end up being on one of those programmes, won't you? where they have awful nurses and things like that. Oh, the phone is ringing. I'm so excited. Our first call now for about three weeks. Good morning, Adam the Plumber. Coming to you live from where? Oh, dear. Very bad phone line. Try again. from Horsham. No, we're not getting that. Try again. No, really bad signal. You got bad okay, signal. Could you drive somewhere else, please? Preferably somewhere with a phone mask. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye. <laughs> oh, dear. One stone and four pound must be a big hole in your pocket. Oh, there are no stones in my pocket. Thank you very much, James. Anyway, so that was the uh, Slimmer's World. So I'm very, very pleased about that. <clears throat> Um, didn't do a lot else yesterday, really. Uh, I watched the film Judge Dredd. Have you seen that? Oh, that's good. That's really good. It's about in, in the future, you know, and there's this big block of flats and it all gets shut down. And the block of flats is being controlled by this drugs baroness, uh, who they call Mama. They call Mama. And they have this, it's the, the drugs that she's selling, it's like in one of those asthma pump things. They go like that and it slows everything down. It looks fantastic. I've ordered some myself to try and calm me down. <laughs> I've ordered some. And anyway, <coughs> there's all sorts of terrible things happening and the judges have to go in and sort it out and they attack the judges and all that. So very, very good film. I think it's quite old, actually, that one, Judge Dredd. So I watched that this morning. Uh, my new... Train picture has arrived. Check this out. Look at that. Isn't that lovely? It's a tile. Okay, it's a tile. And I got this from Amazon. I think it was about £25. That. <clears throat> and what I'm doing at the moment is decorating the front of my house. Uh, it's just a normal brick wall with things like this. I've got butterflies on there, which you saw, I think, last week. Uh, there's cats on there and things like this on the front of the house. So I put on there that no more nails. You can't get it off once it's on. You know, to be honest, you've got to be pretty sure that you want to stick things like this on the wall with no more nails because you have a blooming job getting it all off again. But it's isn't it lovely? I love lovely colours and things. And um, actually, the coach there reminds me of the, the coach, not the train so much, but the coach reminds me of my um, electric... Actually, no, the train as well. Hang on a minute. Let me show you something, okay? I'll show you something that I had when I was a, a much younger. It was about 16 or 18 when these come. Hang on a minute. 
Here we are. Here we are. So, my favourite birthday uh, Christmas present of all time was my Hornby electric train set. There we are. <clears throat> Look at that. And that was the train. The Princess Victoria. Can you see that all right? Isn't that lovely? I think it still goes. I'm not sure if it still goes or not. So that's, that's that little train there. And I kept it, kept it going for a few years. And here's something else. See, this is what we did when we were 16, 17, 18, when I was a child. This is what we did. We went out on our bikes, electric train sets, going around our friend's house to play football. Now, they're chucking... <coughs> oh. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, they go around the streets of London chucking acid at each other, didn't they? Acid or, or knifing and things like that. And later on, I bought this one which is the Flying Scotsman, which flies. Well, it doesn't actually fly, but that, that's, that's another little engine. They're both electric um, uh, electric things, and that's what that picture is. I, think, I don't think that's the Flying Scotsman. It's a bit too small, but I certainly had those coloured coaches on the back of my um, train set that I got for my 16th birthday, so there we go. All right, now, do we have Adam on the line now? We do. Ah, oh, good morning, Adam. That's better. I can hear you now. Good morning. Oh, good. Good morning. We're just talking about getting your lo locomotives out again. Yeah, well, I've got a, a picture of a train that's just arrived on a tile. Yes, I just, just saw that. Yeah, yeah that's very, so that'd very be, nice. That would be going on my front wall as well. I said to yes, my... you have to re you have to refer back to, um, I think it's August 17th, 2015, to see your locomotive. Oh, do I? Oh, I just got them out and showed you anyway, dear. I just got them yeah. back out. Because they're on... <laughs> I keep them on the shelf uh, in the hallway in my window oh, right, so yeah. I can go out and... I remember happy times when I was a teenager and uh, you were just trying to trying to get your phone call there. I was just saying, this is the sort of thing when we done when we were younger. You know, now they go out and chuck bags of acid at each other or knife people exactly. in the street, don't they? Yes, yes. Not like the good old days, is it? No, the good old days. The rest them days. all, right. rest them all. What's new? What's new? What's new for Scat? You're talking about Slimming World and being the consultant. Yes. Yes. Well, we could actually, to see what it's all about, join the social team. That's what I did. You actually went to the meeting, did you? Because they got a couple of meetings That's... coming up. Um, no, well, I, no, I've actually got, I'm actually a member of the social team at Slimming World. Oh, know, right, OK. Way you're in and... Are you with me? Yeah, well, uh, you, you're kind of in and out a bit, to be honest. Oh, am I? Yeah. Better? Are you on the iPhone 7 again? You are, aren't you? I am. I'm I knew it. I knew it. Seven. Them blooming iPhone 7s are completely useless. Absolutely. Are, my mate's they? got one and he doesn't believe me when I tell him, no, you keep fading out. <clears throat> Hold the phone in front of your mouth. And he says, I am, I am. He's not, he's not. Yeah, they have <laughs> There has to be a set position that you hold it in. There is, it yeah, work. yeah, yeah. And actually, it, it can be in the position where mm. you're not very loud as long as you don't move it from there because then I'll whack you up, you see. But the moment you move it, it back again, you're too loud. That's why I have to keep the volume down. Well, it is, it is locked to my face at the moment in a, in a set position. <laughs> yes, good. So, so it should be okay. Yeah, no, I was saying, why, if you're um, talking about Slimming World, yeah. why don't you join the social team? Is it, that's the lady who, she does the cards and then she does the the weigh in and all that business, doesn't she? <clears throat> that's it. Yeah. Well, there's a social group. I don't know how many how many ladies do the the bit that you're on because you normally have where you obviously queue to pay or yeah. you know get your card tapped in and then you go on the and then you go on the queue for the weighing. That's weighing. right. Yes, that's so, right. Yeah. So presumably there's several different people doing those jobs. Yes, there are. There's there's four ladies sitting there. Four ladies yeah, behind well, the um, behind well, they're, the desk. They're part, yeah. they're, they're part of the social team. They're part of the social well, that, team. Well, that social and as a, social team is full up, then, isn't it? No, no, they're always looking for new people to help out because they obviously they can't always be there to do the job. We have a social team of. Uh, I mean, we've got a hundred and hundred and ninety members. Gosh, in our, in our group, that's a lot um, of members, uh, isn't it? Yeah, that's hundred and ninety people in in the West Norwood group. Wow. Um, and we have a social team of around about 15 people. 
Oh, that's not bad, is 20 it? people. Yeah, it's so, not bad. Because uh, there's obviously the, the, the weigh-in uh, where you, uh, sorry, the pay, where you actually queue up and they plug your little card into the card reader and take your money or just th- so you've got think, so many weeks left. I think they had technical difficulty yesterday because the queue didn't move for about 10 minutes. Suddenly it all stopped and there were many women R- gathered around this little device trying to get it to work. <laughs> that could be that could be the case or somebody has uh, and said they've had a holiday and they haven't mm. taken it and they've written it oh. down and it all gets wrong so that's that fun and then obviously you've got your weighing in queue um where you do your weigh in and it's all very very simple it's, all it's done fantastic on a little iPad. dear it's fantastic we love it ray reynolds has just written in i had a triang princess elizabeth he had electric trains well, i didn't know you had electric train ray Aren't they wonderful ah. little things? Did you ever run an electric train, Adam? No, I was into I was more into BMXs and um, and Walkmans at the time. I think. And okay. Find the latest. Not a scale electrics or anything eight. like that. No. No, I think for my sixteenth birthday, I got a. Well, no, I got a motorbike for my sixteenth birthday. Oh wow! Okay, I've never been on a motorbike. Have never been. Oh. No, nope, oh. never ever been on a motorbike. Believe it or not. There we go. We'll, we'll have to start doing, you know, like they done Challenge Annika years ago. Do you remember that program, Challenge Challenge Annika, Annika yes. We'll have to do a Challenge Chris. Oh, no, so dear. You'll have me jumping out of planes and things like that. I'm not having any... Riding you might even a motorbike. <clears throat> you might even make me go on that roller coaster in Blackpool. Can you <laughs> just imagine my face? No, 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 no. Absolutely think, not. No. I think that'd be wonderful. No, yeah, that'd be wonderful. no. I don't do heights. <laughs> when I'm on a plane, I switch off. I completely yeah. f- fool myself into thinking that I'm not actually up any air. <laughs> I mean, You're it's madness. Train, yeah. 500 people packed into this tiny, thin little metal tube, hurtling mm-hmm. through the air at 500 mile an hour. I mean, it's absolute right. madness. The other thing I was going to ask you, did you get a chance to look at my uh, little WhatsApp message I sent you with that link? Now, what was that? That was for the picture in picture. Sent it to your WhatsApp. No, I haven't looked at that yet. Uh, funnily Have enough, site, your site was WhatsApp. Uh, yes. I look, funnily enough, you should say it, just before I came on this morning at about 10 to 10, I looked on your Facebook message wall because I remember mm-hmm. that you'd sent me something. Yeah. And I found there the little story, the Slimming World story, which I would oh, like right, to yeah. read now, actually. Can I read this now? Okay. Yes, I'll, I'll let you get off and um, read that to the, uh, the millions of fans. Oh, OK, then, lovely. Oh, I was going to read it while you were there, but if you're going, you're going. Well, I can, I, I, I can, I can wait for you. you OK. Like yep. on, go ahead. So, as sent to me by Adam the Plumber this, uh, a couple of days ago, this is in the South End News Network, OK? A 32-year-old man from South End has been hospitalised with severe anal trauma after allegedly trying to force a poo just minutes before a weighing at a local Slimming World meeting. Now, I can kind of relate to what's going on here, Adam, <coughs> because mm-hmm. I was standing in the weighing queue a couple of weeks ago with a cup of tea yep. in my hand, sipping away at the tea, mm-hmm. and I could hear women all around me nudging each other in the sun. Look at him. Look at him drinking tea before his way in. <laughs> so I understand what's going on. And honestly, I've sat, I've stood in that queue before. And this is no joke. Ladies say, oh, I'm going to try and go to the toilet before I go. Can you save my place? And off they go. <laughs> mm-hmm. have, you so- <laughs> have you noticed something else as quickly as well, Chris? After they've had their way in, how many high tie bars do they go through? Uh, yes, yes, I have noticed that. <laughs> and then there's those that get to the scales, and you know, I, I just want, I just want to point out here, we don't take the mick out of anyone. Anyone who's no. trying to lose weight, we never ever take the mick. But there is a funny side to things without actually taking the mick. Don't you agree? I do. There indeed, is, I do. and there are those that get to the scales. Okay, step on the scales. Off comes the watch, the earrings, the shoes. Yep. Everything yep. comes off and they're standing there in knickers. I'm sorry, they're standing there in a G-string. 
<laughs> no, but honestly, well, they do. You they should, ta- you should wear a thong, not a jeans thing. I've told you. They take they they take everything off, and then they stand out. I I'm of the opinion that you should weigh yourself in whatever you weighed yourself on the first weigh-in. So the first time I went, yeah. I had a pair of shorts on, a t-shirt, trainers. I don't even take my trainers off. I just stand no. on the thing as I am. Okay, mm-hmm. I take my keys out of the pocket. That's about it. Yeah. Um, but there are others that take everything out. Um, let me just let me just go back to this story. Uh, yeah, the th- 32-year-old man. Um, according to witnesses, Harry Monk was desperate to lose every last ounce before getting himself weighed at the Sean Gota Sports and Social Club on Fairfax Drive, Drive this evening. He was heard making a number of concerning growling noises before letting out a huge shriek in a toilet cubicle. One said it honestly sounded like Bigfoot's wisdom teeth were playing up in the cubicle. Suddenly, he started screaming, and so we kicked the door down and there was a terrible mess in there. When the ambulance arrived, they knew straight away that his rectum had fallen out. The club's manager, Stephanie Dawes, says, We don't advise our members to try and do some sort of last-ditch mouth bowel movement as fecal matter is actually incredibly light. It won't make any difference to the weigh-in, even if you are a mature male rhino. It's the second worrying mm-hmm. incident in the space of a week at an Essex slimming club after one slimmer in Chelmsford stripped naked on the scales to try and counteract the Greg's sausage roll she had had for lunch. Oh, my God. Are you all right, Adam? Greg's sausage roll? Are you still there, dear? Oh, I am. Oh, I've just broke out into a sweat when I said that, dear. The Greg's sausage roll, dear. Oh, oh, it's made me feel well. Oh, oh, we can't talk about such things. Police were called shortly afterwards when fighting broke out because a member had lost two pounds, even though her week had included two Chinese takeaways and a night on the sesh. That is in <laughs> that is in last week's South End News Network. <clears throat> Terrible. Oh my goodness. I mean that that guy that lost his um his rear end. Did they weigh him up in afterwards? I wonder. No, I think the, I don't know. The hospital just took the the ambulance just took him straight away to have it sewn back in. Oh right. Terrible. Ah. Terrible. Terrible. <laughs> So yeah, so a warning to all slimmers: don't try and do it. You can't yeah. do anything. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it, as I say, Chris, it does it does amuse me. I mean, not not taking the Mickey because obviously we're both on the slimming world project. I would anyway. never ever take the Mickey out of someone trying to lose weight. No, never. I, I, I never would. No. Um, and uh, it, but it does it does tickle me. You know, after the weigh-in, the amount of high fi bars that get sold and consumed. <laughs> I don't. I don't think half of them, or, or even more than half of them, have breakfast before they leave for slip. I have breakfast. I have breakfast. I oh yeah, absolutely. I have I breakfast. It's I... one of the the most important meals. Of yeah, the day. yeah. See, what a lot of people don't realise is that if you don't eat enough, you'll put weight on. Yes, yes, because your body because holds body on to start, the weight as well, doesn't it? The body will start storing yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. There was one lady in there, and I have to say, I don't know how she done it. She's been to America mm. for two weeks. She mm-hmm. came back and has lost a pound. Mm. And she's been to America, and, and everyone's like, how did you do that? She says, <coughs> you go to America. Uh, I don't know. Have you been to America, um, da- uh, Adam? No, I wish I had. It's on my bucket list. Okay. Um, there is as much food to eat as you could possibly mm-hmm. want. They have right. breakfast, lunch, and dinner buffets where you would pay mm-hmm. $15, eat as much yep. as you want. That's very mm-hmm. big in the States. Very big. All right. Uh, breakfast, if you're in Florida, a great place to go is Denny's. Mm-hmm. And there you'd order a pancakes, and literally there's a stack of them. Not two, oh not three, eight, eight, seven, six, seven, eight pancakes. All in a stack on your plate. And then after that, and that's covered in maple syrup and butter. Okay. And after mm-hmm. that, you might have sausages, eggs, um, tomatoes, beans, all on a massive plate. That's your breakfast. That's your breakfast. Yep. <clears throat> and when I took my nephew there a couple of years ago, I took him in a Denny's and he looked at mm. me when this food came out. He said, how can I eat all this? <laughs> 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 but she lost a pound. And how did you do that? Because she was careful. She had everything yeah. that everyone else had to eat, but in mm. moderation. 
So yeah, it, and it, probably probably as well the amount of walking that you've done. If if it was a holiday, I would imagine yes. you've done quite a lot of walking. So yeah, you would have burned quite a lot of it off that. Oh place. yeah. I mean, there's two particular things, places that I think are, are dangerous for people trying to lose weight. That is mm -hmm. America and yep. cruises. Don't know, oh, if you've right. been, okay. don't know if you've been on a cruise, no? No. Well, the food just keeps no. coming. You have your breakfast. Oh, right, okay. You have your breakfast, I don't know, eight, nine o'clock. At 11 mm -hmm. o'clock, it's 11s, okay? Yep. Sandwiches come out. Then you have your lunch. Then you have afternoon tea a couple of hours later. Then you have mm -hmm. your dinner. And then you have midnight feast or whatever it's called. And, uh, supper, oh, right. perhaps. Supper, something like that. And each of these things can mm. be a full meal. A full meal. Right. And the food, Goodness. wonderful though it is, just keeps yep. on coming. So they're the two Wonderful. most probably dangerous holidays you could have. America mm -hmm. and cruising. Of course, at the end of the day, it's down to you what you eat. You could go on exactly. a cruise and carry on on that thing if you want to. Or, <clears throat> as as Linda says, you know, you can um, uh, 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 save up the, 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 the sins, the calories, save up the sins, yep. and then that day you have what you want. I'm with you. Yep, I'm with you. All That's right. A good idea. Yeah, so... Um... I think that's that's good advice. I mean, uh, the other thing I was going to say was as well. Uh, obviously, I had a two pound gain last week. Yes. So I thought, what have I done wrong? And I worked it out. I think I've been overindulging on the chocolate. What the Slimmers World you know. chocolate? No, no, normal chocolate. Oh, really? I do, See, I, I haven't it. touched anything normal since since I started. Not a thing. Yeah. You see, now I've always had a problem. With, I've always had a, a problem with um, Coca Cola with chocolate. And, well, with Coca-Cola and mm. chocolate. Mm. So this week, I said to myself, I'm going to fast on them. So I haven't touched a single chocolate bar all week. We will see what happens tonight, then. It's your but, way in tonight, yeah. isn't it? How exciting. Yeah, it's, it's, <clears throat> it is indeed. It's my um, my uh, way in tonight. So we shall, we shall see what has happened. I mean, and I've, I've installed one of these sort of um, apps on the phone, the health app, that counts everything. Right. And so far, the... So far at work today, I've climbed six floors and done 1,722 steps. Okay. Yeah, you do, so you do a job. I don't think you're lacking an exercise because you, you do a job where there's a lot of yeah. walking, lifting, climbing yeah, exactly. involved, don't you? You're a plumber. Yeah. So, um, yeah, great. We shall see. Anyway, Good. Jason, enjoy the show. And, Good uh, luck tonight, Adam. Text, uh, me text me as soon as you have your weight loss so I can break in. Um, I may do a special show, a, a, just a quick show tonight, a, a special emergency broadcast to announce to the world how much weight that you've lost. <clears throat> Wherever okay, I am. Chris, I look forward to it. Shall I do that? <laughs> yes, please. Yes. Special yes. announcement for teachers. Stop the quiz. Just stop the quiz. <laughs> Cheerio, Adam. Cheers, Chris. Bye-bye. Bye-bye now. Adam the plumber who's uh, calling in now. He, he, it's him um, that got me onto Slimmer's World, actually. It, it was actually him who, who helped me because he knew I wanted to lose some weight and, it, and it's worked so far, so all well and good. Uh, good morning to uh, Ray Reynolds says, how about a hula hoop competition at Central Station? Oh, I don't think... No, I haven't got the hips to do it anymore, Ray. I mean, you... <laughs> What could have happened a few weeks ago, Ray, uh, before I went to Slimming World, uh, I would have put the hula hoop on and it wouldn't actually have fallen to the floor. It would have just been caught by my hips, wouldn't it? I wouldn't have to swing my hips round like that to keep the damn thing moving, would I? Now, interestingly enough, in that same online newspaper, the South End News Network, is another story this morning, boys and girls, uh, breaking... 100,000 Kinder Eggs have been contaminated. Now, we heard the egg story last week. Here it is. A spokesman for the European Union Food Standards Commission. I bet he's on a lot of money, isn't he, eh? Oh, the old European gravy train just goes on and on. What's your job? Oh, I'm the European Union Food Standards Commissioner. How much money will he be on, eh? How many millions of those little monopoly euros do you think he's on, isn't it? Ghastly money. Have you seen a euro? There was one here. Here's one. This one here. Yeah, look at this. Look at it. Look at it. It's not... I mean, how is that money? Come on, do me a favour. Pounds, shillings and pence. That's what we want back here in this country. 
Thank you. Um, spe uh, Michael um, bum, 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 spokesman for the European Union Food Standards Commission has announced there will be an urgent recall of more than 100,000 Kinder Eggs that have been contaminated with rubbish toys. Rubbish toys. I mean, how is it that a confectionery organisation has managed to convince you parents that buying this egg and the toy inside is wonderful? It's just a piece of plastic. Have, you, have they convinced us that what's inside one of those awful eggs is good? Michael Garrett, Michelle Garage, a mother from South End on Sea in the United Kingdom, raised the alarm on Friday afternoon after her child was heard weeping. <laughs> weeping while trying to figure out what the hell some little spinny, whirly, plasticky, cartoony thing was supposed to do. Speaking to South End News Network, Michelle says, if I'm being totally honest, the little yellow capsule is usually infinitely more interesting to a young child than the utter horror that lies within. You get a good chocolate smell on it for at least an hour after cracking the egg open. We had a little man the other day whose head just span round and round. And for some reason, I included a little instruction sheet to show you how to spin his head round and round. Oh, it's like the exorcist, isn't it? Your mother... Oh, no, we won't go there. Uh, EU investigators have now confirmed that the contamination has been traced to a factory in Lukaku, a small Belgian... It don't sound the Belgian, does it? Lukaku. That sounds African, doesn't it? Lukaku. Uh, a small Belgian town that makes around 500,000 of the eggs every single day. Um, uh, the latest contamination is a disgraceful lapse in EU standards. And Brexit will allow the United Kingdom to finally manufacture its own chocolate eggs with toys inside. Here's a question for you. If we, here in the United Kingdom, start manufacturing... Our own eggs. What toy would you like to see inside that egg? There you go, question. If we in the United Kingdom were manufacturing our very own versions of Kinder eggs, what toys would you want to see inside those eggs? Either put a message there or give me a call. 020-8144-3477 is my local London number. It's not premium rate, OK? 020-8144-3477 or call in on our Skype, United Kingdom Talk. Mark says, my mum is joining Slimming World and we are going to have more Slimming World dinners. Good. Well, you don't, don't buy the pre-packaged ones. No, you cook them yourself. There's loads of recipe books here. There's one here. There's two here, which uh, the lovely Adam gave me. Look at this. Slimming World's free and easy meals. Well, what do you fancy? Are you, are you a dead animal eater, Mark? Do you eat dead animals or are you, are you a vegetarian type person like me? How about some... Pork cutlets with braised cabbage. Look at that. You can have that, dear. No, how many sins in that? Probably none, actually. When I think, yeah, sin free, sin free. Loads of stuff. smoky sausage and bean stew. Look, you can have as much as that as you want on a Slimming World diet. People don't realise you are not hungry on a Slimming World diet. Last night, do you know what I had for dinner last night? <clears throat> Two corn steaks, a tin of baked beans, two packets of chopped up onions, and what was the other thing I had on there? Two eggs. That was my dinner. Followed by strawberries uh, covered in quark, which is fat-free soft cheese, but it doesn't taste like cheese, with a little bit of candorel in it. So the candorel gave me gave it a sin value of about one. That's the entire meal. I can have 25 sins a day. Yesterday for dinner, I had one sin. You should, you have to join. You have to join. You have to join. Uh, good morning to Adam Vilma. Good morning, Adam. How are you this morning? You're all looking very happy. Everyone's looking very happy today. I'm glad to see that. Good morning to lovely Kim, who's up in Lincolnshire. I'm up there in a couple of weeks, my darling. Perhaps I will see you up there. Um, 
Mark says, my mum is joining Slimming World and we're going to have more Slimming World. Yeah, sorry, I just read that out. Yeah, it's nice and easy. Ah, good morning. Wayne Cara Douglas. How lovely to see a celebrity on here as well. Who knows who's going to join the show next? Possibly Shirley Bassey will be making an appearance at some point as well. Fabulous. Now, I just want to tell you something before we carry on, boys and girls, about the... Um, <clears throat> Uh, the South End news work. New, new, the South End new, uh, Just a minute. The South. <laughs> what is it again? The South End News Network. Now you can type that in, and it will bring up a whole newspaper. Okay, and the South End News Network, incidentally, is as Donald Trump often says. We are fighting the fake news. It's fake, fake. news. Phony. Fake. Fake. A few days ago, I called the fake news the enemy of the people, and they are. They are the enemy of the people. They're very dishonest people. That I called the fake news the enemy of the people, the fake news. And now I'm saying, oh, no, this is no good. But you are fake news. But I am only against the fake news media or press. Fake, fake. Fake, fake. So it is actually fake news, just in case you were wondering. We don't want people ringing in here and saying, oh, I'm not going poo anymore before I go to Slimmer's World. No, get rid of as much as what you can before that weigh-in, OK? Uh, so that was uh, yesterday morning. Uh, I had a little sleep in the afternoon. Yesterday I went to church last night because it was a holy day of obligation in the Catholic world, boys and girls. Yes, it was the Annunciation of the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God. So I went at night. I, don't usually, I haven't been to church at night time for years. It's a completely different atmosphere. It's weird. Very different. Vivian was there as well, sitting next to me this morning. Uh, came home here, as I say, I had dinner. Then I went up to my mate's uh, my mate's house because uh, we usually meet up on a Tuesday night. <clears throat> uh, and just as I was coming around the corner, I spotted a disgusting man chuck a can of Red Bull, empty can, out onto someone's front garden. And what's all that about? And I looked over, and he looks a bit big, so I thought, well, I won't say anything. I'll just carry on my own business. But I've got, of course, I've got a big car, you see. I've got a big car. And um, uh, so I was, why do people do that? Just dirty, disgusting, trampish-type people. He was driving an Audi, which he parks very badly, and people couldn't get around. Uh, went up to my mate's house uh, and we have, we've got to have a little special day tomorrow. We are going out to afternoon tea in London. I can't remember the hotel. And after that, we are going to see a concert at the Royal Albert Hall. And I'll tell you where I'm going to see what I'm going to see. One minute. Uh, we're going to see. There we are. A BBC prom. Oh, where is it? Prom 43, St. Sines Organ Symphony at the Royal Albert Hall tomorrow. So I'm very much looking forward to that. It uh, costs us, I think, £53 for two of us, which isn't too bad for a night out, I suppose. Uh, you know, you've got a whole orchestra. I was someone so scared of that envelope. A series of scores not daring to hold. What the hell's that? Swallowed. Just a moment, please. Now, where's that coming from? One moment. Uh, there's be a little speaker there. It must be that one. Is it that one? One minute. Mute. Is that it? Gone. Thank you. Sorry about that. Sometimes the videos on there start playing out automatically for some reason. Uh, yeah. So I think that's quite not bad value for a night out. You've got the whole orchestra, uh, the comfort of the place and everything else. And it's, what is it again? The Saint Saints Organ Symphony. I just play a tiny little bit of it. This might not be your thing. I'll only play five seconds. Here we go. <laughs> Oh, well, that, that's it. That's it. But there's an orchestra as well. I hope there's an orchestra as well. I don't think it's just... <laughs> it does say it's an organ symphony, but I think there's an orchestra as well. So I'm very much looking forward to uh, going out for a night out tomorrow. I haven't been out for a while. Uh, and then, then, uh, his other half was, was at the house last night and he came downstairs after, because I always go up and watch Holby City with him on a Tuesday. And he came down the stairs and he turned the telly over after. And there was the most awful programme I have seen. Now, as you know, I am a big hater of reality television. I can't stand it. There is no talent in reality television. The only way is Essex is all big boobs and men's gorgeous bodies. That's all it is. And it's the same 
on the celebrity um, uh, Love Island. You know, that Love Island. Pretty people who are just horrible to each other. Ghastly people. And if that wasn't bad enough, and all, all of those, Big Brother, even worse. <clears throat> even worse. Just trashy, awful people laying into each other, tearing each other apart, and sleeping with each other. And then sleeping with someone else. That's all it is now, telly. And I do think this is this is what people want to watch it now, no? Are you one of those? Is that the sort of thing you're sitting there watching? You know, oh, oh, and, and you. Uh, sometimes I listen to my mates have a raft. Why have you got this on? Oh, I like looking at the boys. We well, can get, get porn up on the computer, dear. Why have we got to put up with it? You know, channels like ITV2 or ITVBE. That's one of them. Anyway, there is even a worse one now. Now, I don't know what the title is, okay? Don't know what the title of, of that program was, but basically it was couples who move into this house, and I think there were four different couples, and the idea of the program, oh, you get this, get this, the idea of the program is to see if the couples can split each other This is, this is what was on the telly last, and it's a series. <clears throat> I don't know what it was called. Perhaps one of you knows what it was called. Did anyone see this or hear of it last night? That is, that is, that is the whole thing of the program. Couples that move into a house, all good looking, most of them, you know, all pretty, been down the bloody gym, got ten inches of makeup on, all pretty. Ghastly people who are sent into this house to try and split each other up. Now, it's called Make or Break. Hello, John. Thank you. Make or Break, it's called. Ghastly program. Why is this classed as entertainment? I don't understand. And I'm watching it, and, and this this girl is mouthing off. And, you know, we had the old things of them walking away from the camera and ripping the microphones off and chucking it on the ground. Who the hell do you think you are? Presumably there are people watching it, otherwise it wouldn't be on the telly. But that's got to be the worst one so far. Even worse than The Only Way is Essex and Big Brother, that. To actually put couples who are already together into a situation where they're trying to split each other up. How awful is that? Who came up with that idea? Or am I being a bit old fashioned? Dramas. Dramas on the telly. Quiz show. I think some of the quiz shows are a bit rank, really. I mean, they're a bit... Hosted by pretty boy or pretty girl. Uh, you know, the, the, the only decent quiz show hosts are, of course, Bradley Walsh, who's excellent because he's so natural. He drinks in the King's Head Theatre bar. He's often in there at the bar, but he's so natural on the telly. When you see it, there's no fakeness. There's no fake smile or anything like that. He's really good. Noel Edmonds as well. He's very good, although I gather I haven't seen it yet. There's a new... Quiz show with Noel Edmonds that is not doing, people are not liking. Is it called Cheap or something like that? I quite like him. People like Ben Shepherd though, on there. Fake as anything, that fake smile. Is he the one that does the thing with the coins, you know, that moved out? You know, like at the uh, fun bed. Fake. I'm sorry, that fake smile. When you look at someone like Bradley Walsh, it's all natural. Isn't it? But that's the sort of thing, you know. Well, there was never, never anything wrong with Call My Bluff. But, 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 but. <laughs> Do you like Call My Bluff? Do you remember that? Or coming back soon, Mel and Sue's Generation Game. Oh, we need Bruce back for that as well. Ah, John's watched it. The new Noel Edmonds show is terrible, apparently. Yeah, I've heard that. There's quite a lot written on the uh, internet about that. Mark says, I saw that and I said, oh, my God, it's like Love Island. Yeah, but worse, worse. These people are actually sent into this house to split each other up. I mean, who, who can think of such a format? <clears throat> 
because people just want to sit there and watch people tear each other apart. Just horrible. It's really horrible. Adam says, I watched Tipping Point with Ben Shepard. Is that the one, Adam? Is that the one? He's just, he's just so... Sp uh, no, not a fan of Ben Shepard, I'm afraid. Really not a fan of him. And I have a feeling he'd be lost without auto cue. I think he's one of those. There's quite a few of them would be lost without auto cue. Bradley Walsh, he'd just be able to carry it through. I, mean, I don't think he uses auto cue. I mean, he's got these questions, hasn't he? But that's about it. He hasn't got a thing, a, a television thing in front of him telling him what to say. I and mean, what's the point of that? But shouldn't be there. If you can't carry a show yourself, I don't think you should sit there in front of a camera. And there's a lot of them on there. You'd, more than you would think. There were some very, very famous people on the telly who perhaps you love, who couldn't do it without an auto cue. I've got to be honest, you know, if I was trying to do something like that, if I had to memorise stuff, then I probably wouldn't be able to do that. You know, I, I'm always amazed and hold hold in awe actors who can memorise entire plays. How do they do that? And, well, and especially if it's in like a foreign language like Shakespeare. Come on, let's be honest. Shakespeare is a foreign language, isn't it? How do they memorise all those lines? Great actors like, um, uh, oh, what's his name? Ian, Sir Ian McKellen. Fantastic actor. He memorises it all. He don't need a little screen in front of him with the words coming up or someone shouting, is it, oh, this is what you say next. Oh, it's pathetic. <clears throat> natural people. We like natural people. We really do. Um, Penny Push. That Penny Push is the thing at the fair, isn't it? And it's called Tipping Point on the telly. I like that. Uh, Mark likes the chase as well. Double your money with Huey Green. Oh, yes. That was a good one. And take your pick. Did he do take your pick as well? I can't remember now. That would be a good programme to come back. Take your pick where you open the box. So there was all boxes behind the contestant. And they'd ask some questions. And they get so far. They get the question correct. OK, what would you like to do? I'll tell you what. And there might be all these boxes behind. OK. Would you like to take, and he'd get out his wallet, take 20 quid and go, or do you want to open the box? And they're like, oh. And the people would shout, open the box, take the money, open the box. Oh, no, I think I'm going to open the box. Okay, I'll tell you what, I'll give you 40 quid. 40 quid instead of opening the box. 40 quid, you go home. Oh, I don't know. Open the box, take the money, open the box. And he might say, oh, oh, oh. all right then, um, here's a hundred pounds, a hundred pounds to go home and not open the box. Own a box, take the money. And it might open the box and be a tin of baked beans in there. Ah! Or a holiday for two in Barbados, you see, you take that risk. Great programme, great programme, great programme. Um, who is a lady who does 15 to 1? Her voice is so squeaky. Oh, I don't know. Don't know, I didn't I only watched that a couple of times. I quite like the bloke doing that. He's very straight laced, isn't he? Tall, thin bloke with glasses. Can't remember. A little bit like Jacob Rees Moog, who I quite like. Jacob Rees Mog? Mog. We like him, conservative bloke. Yeah. Uh Mark says he used to like the Barry uh, Michael Barrymore one. Dun, 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 that was with all the television screens, wasn't it? With the arrows. Yeah, I remember that. That was a good one. That was a good one. Uh Dow sent it a picture who says a super slimmer went down from 18 stone to 12 stone. Yeah, she, she won't be the only one. Oh, no, Dale. There are people at Slimming World who have lost upwards of four stone. Four stone. I think the biggest loser of weight in my particular Slimming World is about five and a half stone. It's amazing what you can do sticking to that thing. Sandy Toxfig. Uh, I haven't watched her on the telly. Used to listen to her on LBC. She's she's great on LBC. She's not on there anymore, is she? Adam says, Des O'Connor. I remember that programme when I was a little. Take your pick. Oh, Des O'Connor. Uh, he's not been on the telly for a while now, has he? Uh, he used to have a, a, a chat show on ITV as well. So that was great. Anyway, so that was that programme. Um, take take me, take me, leave me or something like that. You know, the programme we were just talking about there. Uh, Finish that, I came home. I was going to do a show last night when I came home, but I got a little bit too tired, so I just went to bed in the end. What's the time, by the way? What's the time? Stop, stop, stop. Oh, where's my timer gone? 
Where's my time? I've lost my Oh, there it is. Oh, 50. Have I been chatting for 54 minutes? Where does the time go to, dear? 54 minutes we've been chatting to. All right, gang. I think we'll uh, wrap it up there then because it's like 5 to 11. Oh, I didn't drink my tea. Yes, I did. I did drink. <laughs> Losing the plot here a bit. Losing the plot here. Okay, uh, Ray says, take your pick was Michael Miles and started on Radio Luxembourg, so they um, adapted it for the television. I didn't know that, but an excellent thing. There was some really good thing. The one quiz show I'd love to come... I used to love Bob Monkhouse, uh, Bob's Full House. Wonderful theme music. But uh, but do you want to hear it? Do you want to hear it? Want to hear it? <clears throat> Bob's Full House, hang on. I love the theme music to Bob's Full House. Um, and there were some... Excellent theme music's actually. Bob's Full House, every second counts with Paul, with the late Paul Daniels, of course. Bob Monkhouse, of course, being late as well. Um, Bob's Full House titles. Let's try that. There it is. I love the music to Bob's Full House. Here it comes. Hang on a minute. Here we go. Here we go. Are you ready? Yeah! Oh yeah, baby! I believe written by John Miles, I think, wrote the theme music to this. The master of the house, Bob Bunker. Everyone clap! <laughs> so that's one I particularly like. The other one. Written by the same John Meerling. John Meerling. I beg your pardon. John Meerling wrote these um, things, who I spoke to a little while ago. Um, every second counts titles. Let's do this one as well. Every second counts. Uh, very, very similar theme. Uh, again, wrote by the same bloke, John Meerling. Here we go. Let's try this one then. Happy, happy tunes. Here we go. Do you like? Here we go, here we go, everyone. Here we go, boys and girls. Here's your host for every, every second, second counts. Paul Daniel. Daniel. Everyone clap. <laughs> we love it. I love these theme tunes. And I wrote to John Mer Meeling and asked him, is there any chance at all that I could... No, I, I spoke to him on the phone. I got his phone number off uh, a very good friend of mine, John Springate. He was in a glitter band. And he writes tunes and he still goes out and performs cabaret and everything like that. And I always remember, John, I, I was working. I worked with him quite a few times in in uh, in the Black Cap in Camden, actually, years ago. And uh, years later, uh, we, I was on the phone to him and he said, yeah, you never guess what I've just got my first one of. I said that he said my winter fuel allowance. I couldn't believe it. <laughs> and we were killing ourselves on the phone. Such a nice man. Such a wonderful, wonderful man and a proper professional. He is uh, John Springgate. So I managed to get the phone number off him. I rung up John Mealing and I asked him if I could possibly use his songs. And he said, Chris, you could if I still had them. But I moved a little while ago and he lost all the tapes. So um, he doesn't actually have. The only other place to go to would be the BBC and I won't let go of anything. Complete waste of, waste, waste of a message. Waste of tapping away on my computer keyboard to actually hear him. So... Um, uh, to actually ask the question, so I won't bother with that. Uh, big break. I don't remember big break. Don't remember big break, Mark. Oh, the ship. I nearly forgot the ship. The ship, yes. Um, so uh, on the news this morning, you may have seen on, I was watching Sky. I don't usually watch Sky News. But the trouble is at nine o'clock on BBC News 24, colour, uh, they have the Victoria Derbyshire programme, which is good, but it's not news. You know, and, and it, 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 it's, it's like a discussion thing. And I want the news when I get up. So the only place to go to really is Sky News. And uh, they had the ship, the Queen Elizabeth, which has uh, sailed into Portsmouth for the first time this morning. Uh, the story here, the biggest and most powerful warship ever built. Oh, what, what's that now? The biggest. Have you noticed on, on, on Chrome, it's playing blooming videos automatically now. It does my head in that, does. The biggest and most powerful warship ever built by Britain has arrived at a home port today for the first time. HMS Queen Elizabeth will send a message to the UK's allies and enemies that the country means business, according to her captain. The £3 billion 
ship is set to be the nation's future flagship for the next 50 years. And there's pictures and videos of the ship and the stories all over the news this morning. And she is beautiful. It is so big. It's unbelievable. Now, uh, one of our good friends, uh, Christina, who often uh, is with us for the show, has sent in a picture. She was down there at five o'clock this morning, I think. And she's taken this picture of the ship. There it is. OK, I've only got the one picture to show you there, boys and girls. But look at that. Isn't she magnificent? And she is British. Something to be proud of. Something to be totally proud of there. So have a look on the uh, Daily Mail website. That's a good place to see a load of pictures on there. Uh, the BBC website, all over the news this morning. Have a look at that. And you saw that those pictures. Have, a look, have another look again. Look at the size of it. And that beautiful. 700 people um, in control of that. 700 people working on it. Isn't that fantastic? Wonderful, wonderful. Um... Adam says, what is the TV show where you see the contestants run down from the audience? Come on down. Or oh, The Price is Right. Now, I was never a fan of that. That was very, very American. All this, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, please do me a favour. How can anyone be that happy? Have you ever seen me that happy? No. <laughs> all right. Today's birthdays then, boys and girls. Let's do the birthdays for today. First of all, I must say happy birthday to my dear sister, Sharon. Happy birthday, Sharon. I'm not quite sure how old you are today. Imagine not knowing the birthday of your own sister. I think 52. She's just a little, a couple of years behind me. So happy birthday to my sister, Sharon. Hope you have a wonderful day, sis. And I'll get you something when we come up there. We go out specially. Yeah, if, yes, all right. If you want to go to Debenhams, yes. Oh, please, no. Not a whole day, though. I'm not leaving shopping centres at five o'clock at night. It's all going to be done with by two in the afternoon. There's no way, because that's what she does. We go shopping and it's shop to shop to shop to shop and we don't get back to the house until about seven o'clock at night. Oh, I'm not doing that. You'll have to go one morning. I'll take you there one morning, okay? Happy birthday today to Tony Power, who was with us this morning. Happy birthday, Tony. Another musical talent there. Uh, Dennis Badog. Happy birthday, Dennis, playing his trumpet there. Thomas Fabian Totten is 26 years old today. That's a nice age, 26. Happy birthday, Tom. I was fat at 26. That's when I was at my fattest in my late 20s. I was really fat. I had a little round face and a round stomach and everything. And the funny thing is I didn't seem to notice it. Isn't that weird? The first time I noticed my weight was when my, uh, my man at the time, but my boyfriend at the time, uh, who is now my best friend, Ronnie. Yeah, I know. You didn't know that, did you? I went out with him about 25 years ago. It was him, actually. who He used to bring me in cakes all the time while I was at work. And he said to me, I said, well, go and get us a cake. And he said, do you really need that cake? And that was the first time I remember someone kind of mentioning my weight. I'm not saying that, you know, as a, you know, I'm, I'm angry at that or anything like that. It's the first time, really, I became aware. Hang on a minute. What does he mean? Am I a little bit fat then? Of course, when I look back at the pictures now, I can see them. My God, I'm fat, dear fats. Happy birthday, um, Thomas. Happy birthday to Vicky Wooding, who is 31 years old today. Sterland. Sterland Martin, a very, very good friend of mine. I think he lives up in Scotland now. Uh, I met him when I was DJing in France and Italy at the Alternative Holidays um, uh, events. Um, some years ago now, about 10 years ago, when I was a when I was big time club DJ. Not anymore. Was. Was. Big time club DJ then. Happy birthday, Sterland. All right. Uh, happy birthday to Mary Medic. I quite like that. 52 years old today. Happy birthday to Leon Woodvine. 39. Happy birthday, Leon. I haven't seen you for a while. Uh, John LJ Bannister. Happy birthday, John. And Anthony Avromenko. Avromenko is 40 years old today so happy birthday to you all boys and girls here comes the song happy birthday to you happy birthday to you happy birthday happy birthday happy birthday to you enjoy your birthdays boys and girls okay your last lot of messages then. 
And that is Tony Power says, total waste of money, if you ask me. Uh, that money could be going into feeding needy people in the world and upgrading the health services in the UK. What, for, instead of the boat, you mean? I understand where you're coming from, Tony. Absolutely, I understand where you're coming from. I personally think we need a defence. I personally think we need a good defence, uh, whether that's Trident missiles or things like that. Of course, you can take the other view, which uh, indeed you do there. Um, there was a bloke on the radio the other day <coughs> and says, the only reason... This is Nick Abbott on LBC, and he's got a point. He's got a point. The only reason people are pointing weapons at you is if you've got weapons. And I thought, what does he mean by that? For example, take Tanzania or Tanzania. How many missiles are pointed at Tanzania? Because they've got none. How many missiles are pointed at Africa? Think about it. I bet there are none. They've got nothing to fight back with. But on the other hand, you know, if people started coming across the water and started invading them, we need something to fight back with. That's my personal opinion. So there's, you know, there's left and right there. Adam says, I'm not allowed to be over 13 stone, being a professional model. So I have to be careful what I eat. Oh, Adam. Oh, Adam, you look lovely, Adam. Come on, you know that, dear. You know that you look lovely and beautiful. You do, Adam. Are you doing karaoke tonight? No, Adam. Wednesday night is quiz night at the King's Head Theatre Bar. That's where I am tonight. Perhaps you'd like to take on the other quiz. Are you near, Are you around Islington? I'll give you a big kiss on your cheek in front of everyone if, if you come along to my quiz night, all right? Is that a deal? <laughs> are you still there? <laughs> That's it for the show today. Thank you very much for joining us, boys and girls. Um... And uh, I've told you about the quiz night. Yeah, that's it today, isn't it? I'll see you again on the next show. Once again, thank you those of you that bothered sharing the show on your wall. If you missed any of it, just hang around for a couple of minutes and it starts all again as uh, it goes up as a recording after we finish it live. Have a nice day and I'll see you again very soon. Bye-bye now.